How's everybody doing out there? Welcome to another wonderful Thursday afternoon of uh, learning about AP Calculus to prepare you, the student, for the AP Calculus exam, which is in how many days? <laughs> 42 days! What famous athlete was number 42? Call on in if you know what famous athlete was number 42. I understand we already have a caller, Molina Jaguar. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Who's this? Rocio. Rocio? Mm-hmm. How you doing, Rocio? I'm fine. What did you do today in class? Uh, we didn't have class yesterday. What, what did you do yesterday in class? Uh, finding the area, the volume. Finding the volume? Yeah, between... How, how do you feel about that? It's kind of interesting. I kind guess. of interesting. I think so, too. Let's uh, give you a problem about finding the volume, okay? Okay. Let R be the region enclosed by the by y equals x squared, x equals two, and the y axis. Okay. Before we, before we find the volume, if it's rotated by R, find the area of R. How would you find the area of R? Draw it. Draw it. Yeah. Okay. X axis. Y. So we're talking about x equals squared, x equals two, and the y axis. I think it. Um, Hmm. The little triangle. So not if, triangle, but that little thing right there. I think that I think this is meant to be the x-axis to be uh, accurate. So I think we're talking about this region here. What? Okay. I think we're talking about the x-axis instead of y-axis um, to make it a little bit easier. So how would you find the area of this region right here? If this is y equals x squared right here, this is x equals two. What would you do? Okay. Oh, oh, B equals? No, I want the area. First. Oh, the area? Yeah. Integrating from 0 to 2. 0 to 2 of what? Of x squared. Right, that's pretty x. easy, right? Yeah. And it's x cubed over 3 from 0 to 2, so the answer is 8 thirds. That's the area. Well, how would you find the volume of this region if this region is rotated about the x-axis? Okay, it's B equals? Volume equals? Pi equal, I mean pi, integrating from 0 to 2 of quantity x squared squared dx. Right, because what you do is you're adding up a billion little disks, right? And the area of each disk is pi r squared. And integrating adds them all up from 0 to 2. And the radius of each one is what the height is, which is x squared. Okay, so this is easy enough, right? Mm -hmm. This was too easy for you, Elsie. That's right. Hey, did you guys learn washers yet? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, so you guys, all right, so we're, uh, we're way past that. So the answer is going to be 32 pi over 5, right? Mm -hmm. That's a fine job, Elsie. Thank you. <laughs> hey, call it again, all right? Okay. We need to get the little bitty ones to, uh, okay. <laughs> You need to get the little bitty ones? Hi, Mr. Blasher. What little, what little bitty ones do you need to get? Um, flowers from little bitty stores to donate flowers. I mean, little bitty flower shops to donate um, to NHS so we can plant flowers and beautify our school. To beautify your school. That's it. School. No, our school. You're doing a really good job so far. Hey, uh, Annalisa. <laughs> I need to, uh, I'm going to have to get with you. I have a phone number to give you of uh, somebody. <laughs> Actually, I probably should give it to Rachel since Rachel will be the only one up brave enough to call him. Hey, Annalisa? Hold on. Wait, hold on. Annalisa? We haven't done volume. You haven't done volume? Nope. Okay. And Casey wants to know if you can get different pizza for tutorial. No. No. <laughs> but it wasn't just me. It was all President's Council. Okay. Hey, you guys be quiet. Hey, I don't want you to find the volume. I just want you to find the area of this region. Y equals e to the x, y equals x, and x equals 2, and x equals 0. Find the area of that region. Find the area. Uh-huh. Okay, hold on. What? Okay. 
Can you guys please be quiet? April 20th. Mr. Fleischer? Trying to do math here. Okay. Well, April 20th, that's a math, isn't it? Okay. Okay, y equals x. When you, when, you want, when, you want to, when you want to find the area, what's the first word that comes to your mind, Annalisa? Area? When you want to find the area in calculus, what do you want to do? Integrate. Integrate! So you want, to, you want that beautiful integral symbol. That little s-y thing. Little s-y thing. <laughs> okay. That's, I was drawing my picture. So either you the x looks like it. this, why the x looks like this. Up. So we're talking about this region right here. Okay. So what are we going to do? I don't understand. Okay, hold on. I have to draw this, Mr. Fleischer. You're going too fast. Okay. Okay, two, there. So we want the area under the curve? Well, when you have two or curves, we you want, want... Are we doing the area in between the curves? Right, area in between the curves. You want the... This is the top region, this is the right region, left, left, right boundary, left boundary, bottom boundary. Okay. BB. What was that? BB, bottom boundary. We haven't done okay. volume yet. He's just having me find the area. Okay, so where am I? So which curve's on top? What's on top? Either the X is on top. Okay, good, that's what I was going to say. Okay, so it's just going to be the integral of e to the x minus x. What's the integral of e to the x? e to the x. What's the integral of x? x squared over 2. Excellent. Okay, I want you to give me the answer from here. What's the answer after this? Um, like, oh, you mean like minus the bottom? Yeah, yeah. Tell me, what's the final answer? Well, you have to plug in the bounds. I, plug them in. e to the... e to the... Two minus no, is that minus? Yeah, two squared over two. Which is four over two, which is two. Okay, is that the answer? No. Okay. Minus e to the zero. What's e to the zero? One. Okay. So it's negative two minus one. So the final answer is e squared minus three. Yep. Isn't that exciting? Very. And Elisa? Mm-hmm. Got a phone number for Rachel to call. All right. Rachel's not here. Well, you'll have to give it to her because you're too chicken. All right, who's next? Butters! Hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Butters? <laughs> What's going on? Right, nothing. Nothing. You ready? We're eating right now. What are you eating? Um, salsa verde and some cheese stuff. Salsa verde? Uh-huh, and some cheese stuff. It's really good. Yeah, hey, that uh, sounds pretty good. Salsa verde. You know what that means? No clue. Green sauce. Okay, I'm not going to eat it anymore. <laughs> okay. Anyway, here you go. Either that or tooth sauce. I don't know. One of the two. Oh, did you save that for me? Oh, I did. Oh, Find the volume when this is rotated about the, the line x equals 3. So we're talking about this region right here. Mm -hmm. This right again. Right here. This is 2. I want this rotated oh. about x okay. equals 3. First of all, it's all Y language. It's what? Y stuff. It's all with Y. It's all with Y. Good, good. Okay, th I think we're going to have two integrals because, uh, because of the weird radiuses. The weird radii. Whatever. <laughs> Either that or, ra or radiu. Radiu. Radi me. Okay. Um, let's do the function. So um, x equals natural log of y is the first function over there. Oh, so you want to change this, huh? Uh, of course. Because you're sort of rotating about like the y-axis, yeah. right? So I have to have everything in y, right? Right. Mm. So this is x equals natural log of y, all right? Okay, good, good, x good. x equals y is the other one. And the other one's x equals y. Okay, what do we do now? Okay, um, when, um, when x is 2, what is y in the first function? Like an e to the e squared. How much is that? Four point something, right? I'm trying to find the point. You're trying to find the point? Yes. Okay. The first point over there is two and then two e squared, which is something. Hold on, can you turn it down? So this would be e squared. Yeah, e squared. E squared. And the other one would be um, two, right? Well, I think it's just one because it's e to the no, not that one. I mean, that a point. Two, two. This point right here? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's certainly not the scale, is this thing? Yeah, it's so not the scale. So here, I'll try to draw it a little better for you here. Yeah, it's easier to see if you draw it nicely. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to draw it nicely for you. So this is one, this is two, That's this is e squared, squared. right? Well, it is a hard problem, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's okay though. I don't think I meant it to be this hard, but... It's fine. You, you, okay, you, you can handle it? Yeah. Because you're badass. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. How, okay let's do this with two different integrals. Cause yeah, I think, I think it has to be two different let's integrals. Let's have an integral from, um, from zero to two. From zero to two. Yeah, okay. I get that. Well, let, let's try to show why it's two different integrals. Because you have two different, when you do this, when you have this little washer, you have, in each case, the radii is this, the outside radii is that curve, and the inside radii is that curve, right? Yes. And then from here to here, you have different radii. Mm -hmm. So this is really, really hard to follow, and most of the teachers will have to be able to uh, explain this. This is. This is probably harder than anything you'd have on the AP exam. So you want to have something from zero to two. What's the, we're going to try to fly through this because it's so hard. Okay, what's so the radius put here? the pi out front first. Put the pi, pi what, and what's the, uh, what's the outside radius going to be? The outside radius, I think, would be uh, three minus the function. Is right, that point three? Three yeah. minus natural log of y squared. Squared minus. The other one would be three minus, three minus y the other squared. function. Okay. Squared. And that would be sort of the bottom region, and then you would right. add to that. Boy, butters, you. This is amazing. You then you go to from two, two e, to e, squared, e squared, and then you have three minus what? Three minus um um um. um what is that line? X natural, equals two. It, yeah. It's well, the outside would be natural yeah, log of y. Yeah, natural log of y. And then the other one would just be three minus two. Three minus two, which is one. Or one run, and that's it. Butters. What? That is impressive, Butters. Thank hey, how you. come you uh, how come you didn't uh, try the question of the week last week? You know that um, Francisco Hernandez from Skyline and uh, Josh Newton were the only ones who uh, got the answers right, and it wasn't even that tough of a problem. I, I didn't have time to look at it. Butters, no excuse, Butters, no excuse. Huh. Well, last time I got it right, I didn't get any money well so. hey you know sometimes you just gotta you know roll the dice there right nah it's okay i'll hey, do this the next one great job on that problem great job okay thanks james yep james nagler no james miller i'm just yeah. kidding jimmy miller yeah how you doing pretty good how you doing pretty good have you have you guys done volume yet yeah we we've done what a day of it yeah a day of it yeah uh well i think you're ready all right who's uh does Mr. Irby ever tell you jokes in class? Oh, lots of them. Yeah, they're not very funny, though. They are. Okay. Uh, I don't think I have your picture, do I? Uh, no. Okay. Hey, so if this thing is rotated, if this region is rotated about the y-axis, first ask Mr. Irby if you've done these washers yet. Have you done washers yet? Yeah, we've done washers. Okay. So what are you going to do if you want the volume of this solid? How would you figure it out? First of all, does it have a hole or no hole? Yeah, it does have a hole. If it has a hole, what you're going to do is always set it up like this. If it has no hole, you'll set it up like this. But if there's a hole, you're going to have you can have an outside radius and an inside radius. So tell me, tell me, tell me. First of all, what am I going to integrate from what to what? Zero to two. No, no, around the y-axis. Okay. Yeah, from zero to two. Zero to two or zero to four? Oh, okay. Now that you put a four up there, zero to four. Are you sure? Yeah. Why? Because you are integrating from the top to the or front. That's right. That's right. But you know, if you're going across the y-axis or any vertical line, you're going to use y points. So remember that if you're if it's rotated about the y-axis or any other vertical line, you're always going to use y points because when you draw the washers, you're going to add them all up from here all the way up to four. Okay. But the key to remember is if it's y-axis, you're going to use y points. Right. Or even if it's a vertical line like x equals 3, you're going to use y points. So it's from 0 to 4. What's the outside radius in this picture? 4. It's the, what's the radius? The, oh, it's 2. Right. So it's, pi, it's 2 squared. And what's the inside radius? Uh, the inside radius being like 
like inside like the little hole. Yeah, right, exactly. What would that be in this picture? The square root of y. It's going to be whatever x is, which is the square root of y. Excellent. Did you do that all by yourself? Oh, yeah. Hey, Jimmy. We're just going to set up. We're not going to do it. Mr. Professor Miller? Huh? That is a fine job, Jimmy Miller. Fine job. Thank you. Thank tell, you. Uh, tell your class to give you a hand there. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> call, it, call it again. All right. Evelyn? Yes. Are you nervous? Yes, I am. Why are you nervous? Because this is my first time calling. I know it is. Why is it your first time calling? Because I get nervous. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. We'll give you, uh, because you're so nervous. Don't be nervous, but I hear this is a national audience today. I've been, I've been using that joke for like 10 years, and it's like it's never been funny once, Evelyn. It's very sad. <laughs> Not once. Okay, let's do a derivative problem for you. Aww. Aww. <laughs> okay, if f of x is equal to x minus 1 over x plus 1, for all x not equal negative 1, then what's f prime of 1, Evelyn? If this is f of f, f of x, what's f prime of x equal to? It's, um, okay, I know this. <laughs> okay, take your time. It's the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. What's the derivative of the numerator? Negative 1. 1. 1, okay. So times 1. Um, minus the numerator, which is x minus 1, times the derivative of the denominator is 1. Okay. Over the denominator squared. Okay, good, Evelyn. Now, how do you simplify the numerator? Um, distribute the negative to the second one. Okay, what do you get? Um, negative x plus 1. Okay, so we got negative x, so we got, it becomes x plus 1 minus x plus 1, all over x minus 1 squared. That's what f prime is, and what is, uh, that was it simplified to now? 2. So it's 2 over x plus 1 squared. So what's the answer to our question? What's f prime of 1 equal to? 1 half. Right, it's 2 over 4, which is 1 half, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, Evelyn, it's good, Evelyn. Evelyn. Yes. Say chaka. Chaka. <laughs> no, no, say chaka. She hung up. Christy Knapp? Yes. You know, I think you're the one who started all this uh, uh, calculus dating service, weren't you? Me? No, it was Emily. Oh, it was Emily. Okay. Yeah. Woo! All right. Hey, um, <laughs> <laughs> was that Emily in the background? Yep. Hey, Christy. Uh huh. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do some more derivatives here. Okay. A little implicit differentiation. All right. So let's try this. Negative eight x squared plus five x y plus y cubed is negative one forty nine. Negative one forty nine. Find dy dx. dy dx. Okay. Um, it'll be negative 16x plus 5x times dy over dx. Right. Plus y times 5. Okay. Five That's good. Excellent. Excellent. We moved the paper over a little bit. All right. Thank you. Plus 3y dy over dx. Plus I mean 3y squared. Plus 3y squared. dy yeah, over yeah. dx. Equals? Zero. Okay. Now what do we do? Um, put the dy over dx like on one side. So take the negative 16x to the right. And the 5y. Is like that? Uh-huh. Okay, now what do we do? Um, uh, uh, uh. Oh, factor out the dy dx. Okay, so you get dy dx is equal to 5x plus 3y. 16x minus 5y all yeah. over 5x plus 3y squared, right? Yeah. Okay, try to answer this question now. Mm -hmm. Part Question number two. Write an equation for the line tangent to the curve at the point four, negative one. 
Uh, y minus or y plus one. Y plus one equals that whole little equation up there. The whole what? Oh, okay, hold on. Um. Oh, we got to work out that. Put the four in the negative one and the. Right, you put four negative, 16 times four is 64, minus a negative five is 69, uh -huh. all over 20 plus three, you get 69 over 23. Uh-huh. So that equals three. So the slope is three, right? Uh -huh. You plug these into dy dx, uh -huh. and then you get x minus four. Hey, Chrissy, that's a fine job. Thank you. Do you know that was on the 1995 AP exam, free response? Oh, really? Free, yep, it sure was. All right, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Is this Ben right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey Ben. Yeah. We are going to give you a fun problem. All right. Because you've been asking for fun problems. Have I? Yes, you have. All right. Here you go, Ben. Okay. You're humming. I am. Okay. Now let's get started here. Uh, let me see what this looks like. <laughs> um, okay, am I, we're, we're finding the area first. Well, and then I'll the tell you what we're going to do. Well, what we'll do is I'll help you out here. This is uh, cosine x and this is uh, sine of x. So we're talking about this region right here. Okay, are we going to rotate it around? Oh, okay, we're going to rotate around the x-axis. We're going to rotate it about the x-axis. So it looks something like this. And it's going to make some, some washers. It is going to make some washers. Now, let me ask you a question here, uh, uh, Mr. Wright. Yes. If we're rotating about the x-axis, are we going to use the x-points or the y-points? We're going to use the uh, x-points. We're going to use the x-points. Now, where is the point of intersection between cosine and sine? Uh, I don't know why. It's probably going to be something I should know, right? Well, cos yeah, probably. Give who me. Huh? Who was your pre-calculus teacher? My pre-calculus teacher, uh, Mr. Morales. Well, Mr. Morales is no longer there, so we can't ask him. Cosine is equal to sine. See, anybody, see if anybody in the class knows. When does cosine equal sine? When does cosine equal sine, guys? Uh, I'm just getting pi over twos and things like that. How about pi over four? Pi over four. Because what's the sine of pi over four? This, uh, the sine of pi over four is uh, <laughs> wow. That's uh, that's forty five degrees. So sine, sine of forty five degrees. Yeah. Is what? Is the square root of three over two? No. It's just. It's, hey. It. No, hold on a second. We're having help. <laughs> this is my weak point. See. Have, have you seen this before, Ben? Yes. They've, you've drawn this for me before. I've, I've drawn this for you before? Yes. I have? I don't remember. 0, 30, 45, 60, 90. Oh, well. If you want to go to the sine of 45 is square root of 2 all over 2. Cosine of 45 is square root of 2 all over 2. You know what? Sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 60 is square root of 1 over 2. Have you seen this before? Uh, yes. So what's the sign of 45 degrees or pi over 4? That's uh, the square root of 2 over 2. What's the cosine of uh, 45 degrees? The square root of 2 over 2. So that is why that's when the sine is equal to cosine. Hey, Ben? Yes? I want you to draw this. I want you to put it on a piece of paper. I want you to put it next to your pillow. Okay? Next to my pillow. Next to your pillow. I want you to sleep with this. <coughs> so there should be like drool stains on this. So you mm. should know this. Okay. But then I might then I might smear the beautiful numbers. Well, not if you use uh, smear-proof uh, ink. Anyway, so we got we got this. We're gonna rotate about the x-axis. We're going from zero to pi over four. And uh, so, what is the outside radius? I mean, what what do we do now? Uh, it's it's gonna be the same thing you did before with the big R squared, little R squared, all to pi, all times pi. Right. And what's big R squared equal? Uh, that's going to equal um, cosine. So it's cosine squared, uh, and, and, yeah. what's, and what's little r equal to? Going to be sine squared. Excellent, excellent. Okay, and now 
I'm afraid to ask this, but do you know uh, what this trig identity is? Mm. Mm, no. Okay. Well, you know, and then, well, if you, no. Give me something else to sleep with. Okay, well, that's <laughs> a. Well, uh, I think that this little chart is uh, safe enough. Well, from here you can do this on the um, on the calculator, and then next week's assignment is you for you to memorize what this trig identity is. Okay. Okay. All right. And so you tell me next week what cosine squared minus sine squared is. All right. You bet. All right. Oh, well, thanks. I didn't do it. I didn't <laughs> do it. Talk to the guy that uh, you call. Talk. Talk to Rosie, okay? Hey, Ben, have a good one. Call in again, all right? Take it easy. Yeah. Julie! Hi. No, hi to you. Hi to you. <laughs> hi to you. Okay. What do you do? <laughs> That's enough? <laughs> what? You've had, en you've had enough? Uh-huh. I quit. You win. Well, thank you. You're I, welcome. I like to win. Okay. Um, I win. So, uh, <laughs> so who's, uh, is, uh, is Matt there today? No, I don't. No, not yet. He's coming, I think. Okay, all right. He's running late. Can you believe that? The calculus show. You know, Julie, I don't know. Julie, what's your last name? Thane. Oh, Julie Thane, the <laughs> senior class president. Yeah, that's me. I have a picture of Antoine. Do you want to see who you beat out for a class president? All right. As if I don't know who he is. <laughs> hey! Yay for Antoine. Who's he hugging? I don't know. Okay. I think she's a freshman. Boo, she's a freshman? freshman? Yeah. So, uh, Antoine's in. Okay, all right. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, how do you do this problem here? Uh, that I'll be the region closed by y equals x squared, x equals 2 in the y axis. Find the volume out when it's rotated about y draw equals 4. Draw. Can we draw it first? Yes, we can. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome, baby. First of all, if we are, the, gra the curve looks like this. If we're rotating about the line y equals four, Julie Fain. It's gonna be x. Are we, is it gonna be is the integral gonna be from zero to two or zero to four? Which one? Zero to two. Because we're rotating about a x horizontal axis. line, which is like x axis, right? right? So therefore, what do you do? You integrate find a point telling you two comma four. I don't know. Well the we, that right there. It's going to be two comma four, yeah, a I point. Two and four there. Who's, who yeah. said that? Who's, who, who's? B's behind me, but who I is? scooted away because she's talking to my aunt. I couldn't hear. I know. It's really, it's really distracting. Butters. I know, Butters. <laughs> tell, tell Butters you can handle this your own. Oh, I can handle it, Butters. Okay, anyways. So we're going to integrate from zero to two. Put pi out front. And then um, you're going to take... Wait, we're, uh, it's going to be a whole because we're doing around it the x-axis. It sure is going to be a whole, so right? Big R squared minus little r squared. Okay, what's uh, what's big R? Hey, tell Butters to stop. Butters. Spread. Butters, no. Spread, spread. So it's going to be, okay, she said, <laughs> she said all. So you take four squared. Okay, very good. And then you're going to subtract x squared. Squared. Yeah, this is the uh, the outside radius is right here, and the inside radius is here. Now, what is this inside radius? Four. What? I mean x. Actually, I don't want four. Mine's four. It's, <laughs> it's <laughs> and then x squared. It's four minus, four minus x, squared. x squared. Because you know why? It's like this th this line it varies. This, the inside radius varies. See, They're taking the whole thing, minusing that little Right, part. so it's, it's all of this, which is 4, minus this, which is x squared. Okay. You see that? Mm-hmm. And then you would uh, square that, and then there'd be happiness. B says you're wrong. Who says I'm wrong? Butters. Butters says I'm wrong? I think she's confused. Hold on. She's wrong. She says you're wrong. Is she sure that I'm wrong? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, put it on the line. Hold then. on. The first radius that you have to do is... Uh, 4 squared and then minus 4 minus x squared squared. That's what I have. No, it, well, you can't even see that. Well, that's what I have. <laughs> you see that? Out nice butters, so butters, see admit, butters, butters, <laughs> butters. Okay. Butters, it takes a really proud person to admit, a really strong person to admit when you're wrong. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, Butters. <laughs> you say, just don't write nicely. If you wrote it nicely, <laughs> I would say now, you're right. The honesty is a good thing. I am, have a horrible handwriting, and I agree with you. But Butters, say that 
Mr. Fleischer, you were right. I was wrong. In okay, Mr. Fleischer, you were right because I didn't see it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> excuses, excuses. But it's fine job. Let, let Julie do it herself next time, okay? Uh, okay. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> Francisco Hernandez, $10 winner! <coughs> Francisco? Yes. You win the $10 for the. Um, you gotta get away from the TV though. Yeah. Wanna show everybody the $10 winner for the question of the week? Francisco Hernandez? You will get it at the April 7th prep session. There he is! Francisco, yes. I like how you did it where, by the way, always, answer for calculus is always going to be in radians. Always keep, oh, okay. Are you taking physics also? Yeah. You, you have Mr. Castro? Yeah. Oh, that's, I didn't know that. That's awesome. The, um, you know, physics, they use degrees, so, but the AP calculus exam is before the physics exam. Make sure everybody who has that, your calculator is in, is in radians for, um, for calculus and degrees in physics, okay? Yeah. Because they'll really mess you up if it's in degrees. But that was yeah. a great job. Hey, have you done volumes yet? Yeah. Okay, here you go. Let's try this. <coughs> Same thing, sine of x and cosine of x. So we've seen this before. We had this before. And this is pi over 4. We want this road region, road, or actually no rotation. We want this where this is the oh. base of a solid whose cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis are squares, so find the volume of the solid. Okay. The um, area of a square is the side square? It's a side square, right? Yeah. yeah. So, help me out. Um, the integral from 0 to pi over 4 um, times um, These are popping out right at you. Sine of x minus cosine x. Which is on top? Uh, sine of x. No, this is actually oh. cosine x. Oh, okay. Right? So it's cosine x minus sine x quantity squared. Yeah. Hey, you know, I'm going to show you something in a second, but if you had to simplify this, if you had simplify this, this would be cosine squared minus 2 cosine x sine x plus sine squared x. So this actually simplifies to something. Do you know what? First of all, do you know what 2 cosine x sine x simplifies to? Um, Remember that identity? Sine of 2. X. Very good. Sine of 2x. And cosine squared plus sine, cosine squared one. plus sine squared is one. 1. So it's 1 plus sine of 2x. And that is a lot easier to integrate. Yeah. It's a lot easier to integrate than that, right? Mm -hmm. So you could have done that. Hey, I'm going to ask you something. You know. That's excellent, but you, if, if, it was, if it wasn't squares, if it was semicircles, this is what I want you to do for next week. I want you to give me a formula. For squares, it's just, let's say, um, it's, uh, let's say it's y1 minus y2. I want you to give me a formula if they were semicircles for equilateral triangles and if they were isosceles right triangles. It's the same formula every time if you use these. So for next week, I want you to tell me what these formulas are. All right. Okay? In other words, if you had some, if these were semicircles, it's automatic. It's automatic what you know what the answer is. You don't have to go through the geometry each time. But you will have to go to, through the geometry to, uh, if this was isosceles right triangles and the region is the hypotenuse. Okay? Yeah. So go through those next week. Give me the formulas each time. Okay. In other words, what I'm asking for, just to let you know, if you have two curves, whatever they are, if this base is squares, I want, then the formula is just y1 minus y2. This will be, the top curve will call y1, the bottom curve will call y2. That's for squares. I want the formula, if this is the diameter of a semicircle, I want the formula if it's a side of equilateral triangle, I want the formula if it's a hypotenuse of isosceles right triangle. You know what I'm asking? Yeah. All right, that's great. If you can do all that, it'll be a piece of cake when you get on the AP exam.
Hey, great job, Francisco. Thanks. Well, you get that ten dollars April seventh when you come to the prep session. Okay. Who's next? Rodrigo! <laughs> Rodrigo! Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine. And don't whisper. Don't whisper those. You know. Don't don't whisper soft, sweet nothings in my ear. <laughs> hey, Rodrigo. I got a great problem for you. And I know that uh, Ms. Brzezinski teaches us a little bit differently, and it's really cool the way she teaches it. So you're going to have to uh, show everybody how she teaches it. Um, e to the x, y equals x, and x equals 2. Rotate about the line y equals negative 3. OK, move, move the line up. Move the line up. That's what you guys do, right? You move the line up. So how do you move the line up? Oops, I didn't mean that. <laughs> Rodrigo, how do I move the line up? Y equals zero. So you can rotate in the X axis. Okay, so what do I do? Tell me what the new uh, the new functions would be. E, e to the x plus three. Right. See what they do. If it instead they like to always rotate about the x or y axis, so they just create new functions. They'll shift these guys up three. They'll shift this whole thing up three. In effect, it'll be the exact same region. So what they'll have, it'll look like this. Where this is three and this is four, and now you're rotating about the x-axis. And this new function is e to the x plus three, and this bottom function is just x plus three, right? Yep. Okay. So therefore, now from there, you know that this is um, that's two. So what what are we going to do? So we're rotating this region about the x-axis. Put the plus three down. Only e to the x. What, what do I write? It's e to the x plus 3. Okay, e to the x plus 3. Yeah, yeah. Volume equals pi, integrating from 0 to 2. All squared. Okay, good job. And that's all you do, and then times dx. Okay, so you could do it like that. Otherwise, you're going to get the same answer. It's just that what you guys do, you rename the function, and that's a great way to do it. All right, Rodrigo? Yeah. Rodrigo? Say Jaguar. Okay, never mind. All right. Hello? Hey. Josh Newton? No. Joshua, what school? Woodrow. Joshua from Woodrow. Chupik. This is Josh Chupik? Yes. How you doing? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. How's calculus going? Not good. Why not? Because <laughs> it isn't. It just isn't. Well, you know, you're a really smart guy. No, I'm not. Well, give me an easy problem. Uh, you want an easy problem? Okay, I can't give you that one then. Um, oh, actually, this is not easy, but this is a different type of problem. This is good, Josh. If you get this, Josh... Now, you will definitely pass the AP exam. Now, if you don't get it, it doesn't mean you won't pass it, but if you get this, you're, uh, you're all set. Do you, have any, uh, do you have any relatives in, our producer wants to know if you have any relatives in Waco. Uh, yeah, probably. Probably. Yes. So you take the derivative. Okay, take the derivative. What's the derivative? Uh, 3x squared minus 10x plus 3. Okay. And hmm. no. 
Yeah, yeah no, that's right. Now what do we do? You set it equal to... Uh... Let me ask you something. If the function has a relative minimum, so if you whatever a function looks like, if it has a relative minimum, what's happening when there's a relative minimum? What do we know about the derivative? The derivative is going from negative to positive. The derivative changes from negative to positive, but what is happening at the exact point? It's zero. Right. So we want to find when the derivative is zero. All right. Okay. So we got, um, oh man, how do we do this? Uh, Uh, quadratic. Yeah, you can use quadratic formula. Factor, you can factor. Okay. Which one do you want to use? Factor out uh, x. Cannot factor out x. You want to use quadratic formula? Uh, sure. Okay, so what's quadratic formula? Uh, opposite of b. Which is what? Uh, 10 plus or minus square root of 100 minus Four times nine, thirty-six. Mm-hmm. So ten plus or minus six over six. Okay. So what's the square root of a hundred minus thirty-six? What's that equal? That's uh, six. What? Oh, eight. Sorry. So you got ten plus or minus eight. So you got eighteen over six, and you got um, two over six, right? Right. So you got either three and a third. Three or one third. How do we know which one's the relative minimum or not? Uh, which one the fun when you plug it in and it's. Uh, uh, well, you could do Josh is this little chart right here. Right. And if you plug in uh, like a number like five into the derivative, you're gonna get something pretty big. Seventy-five minus fifty. If you plug in the number one, you get a negative. If you plug in a zero, you get a positive. So the function's increasing, decreasing, increasing. So which point, where did, where, which one has the, re, which is the relative min? Uh, x equals 3. Okay, at x equals 3 is a relative minimum. So now let's see if we can answer the question. At x equals 3, we know the function has a relative minimum. Right. And we want 11 to be that relative minimum. Okay. So... Plug in three for x. Which one? Three for x here, top uh, or bottom? The top. Okay, we plug in three and we got 27 minus 45 is negative 18 plus 9 is negative 9 plus k. So f of 3 is equal to negative 9 plus k. So you set that equal to 11? Set that equal to 11 and you get k is equal to 20. So in other words, if k is 20, then this graph is a true statement. That if this is 11, the minimum we know is already at x equals 3. If we want the y value to be 11, then k would have to be 20, right? Right. You understand all that? Yeah. That's actually a pretty hard concept. So that's a good job there, Josh. It's good hearing from you. All right. Bye. Pumika Tepadilla. Hi. Who pronounces your name right every time? He did. Yeah, thank you very much. Pumika <laughs> Tepadilla. That's a great name. Hey, uh, how are things going? Good. Where are you going to school next year? UTD. UTD, what are you going to major in? Um, either pharmacy or some medical related field. I think I've already asked you this, haven't I? Yes. <laughs> Did I ask you every time? Um, I, I think. Because I already knew that. Okay. <laughs> That's okay, though. Sometimes you change your mind, though. Hey, <laughs> Bumika Cappadia? Yes. How about this problem? Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, storage tank has a shape as shown. Oh, I can't do volume, Mr. Well, Hunter. you're going to have to try. Okay. Okay, so you got y equals one ninth. This is one ninth x squared. This is from x equals zero to x equals three. By the way, what point is this right here? I have no idea. Yes, you do. If x is three, what would this point be? Th three. Oh, wait, x is three, then it's three squared, nine. What's that one over what? One ninth. So it's 1. Y is equal to 1. Y is equal to 1, right? Okay, right. that's not so hard, right? Okay, now we rotate this about the y-axis. Now, first of all, is this going to have a hole or no hole? First of all, I have, before you do that, if it's rotate about the y-axis, are we going to go from 0 to 1 or 0 to 3? If it's rotate about the y-axis. 
Zero to one. Zero to one, right? So mm -hmm. the first thing you're going to write down, you write down zero to one. You have a dy out here. Now the point here is that if it's zero to one, is there is there going to be a hole or no hole? No hole. All right, because you're from zero to one, you're taking all of these puppies. Woof, woof. <laughs> right. Right. So therefore, uh, then it's just a simple volume problem. If there's no hole, what's the formula every time, Bumika Kapadia? Pi r squared. Pi r squared. Okay, now what is the r? It's, um, let's see, the radius. It's the radius, and what's the radius? Three. Mm. The radius varies. Oh, x. The radius is x. Excellent. Now here's the only problem. When you rotate about the y-axis, use y points and you use dy, you have to have it in terms of y. Right? Right. So what is that? You're going to take your x and put them into your y. Huh? I have to rearrange the equation. Okay. We want to know what x squared is. If y is 1 ninth x squared, real quickly, what's x squared? 9y. Excellent. So that's all you do. It's 0 to 1 and 9y dy. And that's the answer. Okay. Wasn't that exciting? Yes. Kumika? Uh -huh. Say that was more fun than I've had on a Thursday afternoon in the last three days. And uh, Miss Arthur wants you to stop doing so many volumes. She wants me to stop doing so many volumes. Yes, because we haven't learned it. Or they haven't learned it. That, and that is very rude of me, isn't it? Yes. I understand. Ask Ms. Ar Ms. Is Miss Arthur taking care of the PSAT stuff for the school? Yes. Thank you very much, Mrs. Yeah, Arthur. And Casey wants to know if you got her logistics and... I know. I, I thought about that about half an hour ago. I did promise her I'd get that uh, for her, and uh, I do not have it. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. No, thank you, Bumika Capadilla. Okay. okay. Is this Laura Jefferson? Yes, it is. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Hey, did you uh, enjoy the English thing, Saturday? You could tell me the truth. Oh, yeah, that was just a blast. Really? What was what was your favorite uh, session? Um, I don't know. Eighteenth <laughs> century poetry. I think it's seventeenth century. Oh, whatever. <laughs> seventeenth hey, with Dr. Rice? No, no, I didn't go to that one. Why weren't you at the softball? Hey, why weren't you at the softball game on Monday? Julie wants to know. I have to work for a little. Oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, what is this here? The uh, did you win? Yeah, of course we did. <laughs> What's the score? Seven to two. Well, don't you have another game? Yeah, next weekend, Saturday. Uh, April we, have, 7th? We, we have a, pre a math prep session. You should, you're oh. skipping the softball game to go to the calculus <laughs> session. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I'm running out of problems here. Okay, here we go. Can I have a BC problem? A BC problem? Yeah. Okay. Nothing hard, though. And Matt's here, and he wants to talk to you when I'm done. Oh, he does? Okay. Well, i got to think of a BC problem off the uh, top of my head here. Okay. Does Easy. This not sequences. Well, that's the only thing I know how to do. Oh, fine. I'll try. Okay. Well, here's a no. Here's a good problem. Here, somebody asked me this the other day. Here, um, the um, what is this? Right bigger. We can't see. <laughs> right bigger. Okay. on the right side. BC problem, there you go. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Okay, the integral of natural log is you have to do U V, don't you? Yeah, you yeah. do. Okay. Um This is uh for B C only. So if anybody's A B watching this you can learn but Okay, your U is natural log of X. Okay. Your D V is D X. Okay. Which makes your VX and your DU 1 over X. So then you have UV, which is X natural log of X, minus the integral of VDU, which is X over X DX, so it's just the integral of DX. What's the integral of DX? X. Right. Okay. And then... Okay, so that's the integral. Right. So what do we do here? Now here's that, this is where it gets hard. That was actually the easy part. Right. This is a really hard problem, Laura. Okay. <laughs> do you just go ahead and plug it in and stuff? Plug it in. Go ahead, plug okay, it in. Okay, 2 natural log 2x um, minus 2, and then minus b natural log b plus b 
Minus B. Minus B. But now it's a, for the limit. No, but it's minus a negative. It's plus. You're right. I Thank apologize. you. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's zero, so okay. I, that's why I wasn't concentrating. So now, how do you do this? For the limit as B, now the limit as B goes to zero, what is, okay, this is obviously zero, right? Right. And this stays the same. So it's two natural log of two minus, what is, as limit as B goes to zero from the right, what is B natural log of B? And then zero? Well, when you plug in zero, it, when you plug in zero here, but what's the natural log of zero? And at one? No, it's, e. the natural log of zero is really, it's in negative infinity, and let's show you why. So, and that we're still not, we still haven't got to the hard part. This is a really hard problem. Okay, so what we have is, <laughs> what we have is, we know the natural log of x is equal to the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt, which is the area, it's the area for underneath 1 over t from 1 to, like the natural log of 2 is this area from 1 to 2. Uh -huh. Well, the natural log of zero, it doesn't close off here. So what it is, it, it's this area. If you have, if it's less than uh, one, it never reaches zero. Right, like the natural log right. of zero is equal to the negative from zero to one of one over t. So it's like negative, and this is like infinity. You sort of see that? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you have zero times negative infinity in a limit, what do you do? Um. Oh, you have to take the derivative. No. Well, you're close. Well, because like that rule where you take the L'Hopital! <laughs> oh, gosh. L'Hopital! Yes, L'Hopital's rule. There you go. Don't but, you take the But wait a minute, here's the problem. L'Hopital's rule, you can only use zero over zero, infinity over infinity. This is zero times infinity. What do we do if you have zero times infinity? I don't know. <laughs> you got to make it into a L'Hopital! Oh, uh, take the to multiply it. So now it's natural. If you rewrite B natural log of B, the natural log of b over one over b. Right. If you do that, now when you now you have infinity over infinity because right. now you can do L'Hopital. <laughs> so this answer to this <laughs> now you take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, which is one over b over negative one over b squared, right. which is simplifies to negative b. And mm -hmm. now when you plug zero in, you just get zero. Right. So your instinct was right. The answer was zero, but you got lucky. Okay. <laughs> so the answer is two natural log of two. Thanks. No, thank you. you uh, talk to Matt? Next Saturday, you're not pitching. You're going to be at the prep session. Uh, okay. Do you want to talk to Matt real fast? Uh, sure. Uh, Here, hold on one second. Real sec. quick. Hello? Matt. Yeah, they said you wanted to talk to me. Uh, I thought, is Ashley Cloud there? Uh, yeah, I think so. You put it on the line. Here you go. Hello? Ashley, what are you doing April 21st? Uh, <laughs> Matt, Matt wants to ask you to prom. Oh. This is a dating service, I'll tell you. So uh, you guys got to hang up because if you say no, I'll be too embarrassed. So you better say yes. Call in again, all right? Congratulations. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Allison. Allison Hall. Yes. Did you sign up for that lit test? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Did you get Kara too also, Miranda and everybody? Um... Not exactly. Hold on, Miranda, are you taking the test? No, Miranda's not taking the test. Is Miss Fusile, uh okay, tell Miss Fusile to uh, take care of it for you, and, and that's good, that's great. Hey, Allison, how come you didn't come uh, Saturday? Um, Because I just decided this week that I'm actually going to take the test. Awesome, baby. Awesome. All right. Hey, uh, just for that, have you done volumes yet? Yes, but I'm totally confused after the last problem, so don't hit me. Oh, the, the last door. problem was a BC problem. Yeah, I know, but it's confused my brain anyway. It scared, it scared me too, so don't, <laughs> we, it really did. Okay, let's do this problem here. Okay. Let's do, we'll do an easier volume problem. We haven't done this one yet. It's the same type of region we've been doing. Mm -hmm. Y equals X squared, X equals 2, and, uh, rotate, and, and we're going to rotate about the line X equals negative 1. Okay. okay. First of all, are we going to use 0 to 4 or 0 to 2? Which one? 0 to 4. 0 to 4 because it's like the y-axis, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And is there going to be a hole or no hole? Um, there is a hole. There is a hole, right? Yes. Okay. So therefore, if there's a hole, it's going to be r squared minus r squared, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So therefore, what are you going to do from there? We're going to have to get it in terms of y in terms of, blah, x in terms of y. 
Is it going to be dy or dx? Dy. Okay. And what are we going to do from there? Um, do that. <laughs> so, yeah, find your find y in terms of x. X in terms of y. Whatever you know. Okay. So, um, so what? Square root the, of y equals x. Let's do that first. Okay. The um. So it's going to be. Um, Tell me again one more time what you think it's going to be. Well, the big. Well, you want to do the big R first. Let's do the big R first. Okay, the big radius is three. Three every time, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And what's the little radius? Um, it's going to be three minus. No, I'm sorry. Negative one minus um square root of y squared. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this. It's going to be. It's this part right here plus this part. What's this part going to be? One. It's going to be one, right? Mm -hmm. And now in this part is going to be x, so it's one plus x, which is square root of y. Do you okay. see that? Uh huh. And that's excellent. That's how you set it up, and then from there you can do you can expand it out, but we're not going to do that. But do you see that? Do you understand why it's one plus square root of y? Mm hmm. Hey, Allison, that's great. This is a really hard problem. Okay. It's a really hard problem. Hey, I think we got Allison. Good job. I think you're gone. Hey, uh, um, who's who's Richard? Yes. Richard? Yes. Skyline? Yes. Last name? Herrera. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Okay, we got time for one. We got. Uh, well, we have time for one problem here. I'm going to give you. Uh, let's see how you are with derivatives here. This is probably too insulting for you, but uh, why don't we go ahead and fly with this? All right. Okay. What's that? Is that Catherine Morgan? Yes. What'd she say? She said she wanted to say hi. Yeah, let me say hi. Well, tell her I say hi also. Let me say hi. She wants to say hi. Hi, Mr. Fleischer. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> I suppose you want to talk to him, huh? Yeah. Why? Because we only have a minute left okay. or so, so okay. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> okay, go ahead and do these three problems real quickly. Okay, uh, I guess you bring down three, make it three times the natural log of x squared. Okay, so we want to... Uh, well, actually, so you want to make this three natural log of x is like that? Oh no, we. It's a uh, three natural log of x. What is it? Three times the natural log of x. So three natural log of x. You want to rewrite it to be three natural log of x. Now, when you take the derivative, what do you get? Uh, three times one over x. So. Which is three times one over x, or just three over x? Yes. Well, you also could have done it's the natural log of u, and the derivative of u is three x squared all over x cubed, right? Yes. So that is equal to three over x, right? Uh huh. Okay. So therefore, uh, y equals natural log of x quantity cubed. So um, what do you do from there? Um, let's see, three times one over x squared. So it's, it's 3 times natural log of x squared times 1 over x, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and what about y equals e to the sine of x? Uh, ouch. Um, yeah. Your u is sine of x, isn't it? Yeah, it's okay. Good, Richard. Okay, so your du would be cosine of x. Good. Cosine of x times what? Uh, e to the sine x. E to the sine of x. Yay. Yay! Hey, Richard? Yes? Let me ask you something. Are you going to go to the uh, April 7th math prep session? Actually, I have a physics competition that day. Physics competition? Yes. Are you taking Physics C with Mr. Castro? No, I'm taking Physics B with Mr. Mr. Chavez. Chavez. That's excellent. That's excellent. You're going to take the Physics B exam? Yes. Well, that's very good. Very good. Hey, listen, have a great weekend, and make sure you call next week. Uh, don't forget, Richard, that we have every week the question of the week, a $10 prize to go to um, www.apstrategies.org. And uh, this week's winner is from the great Skyline Raiders, Francisco Hernandez. Y'all have a great week. We'll see you uh, next Thursday. Bye.